Um, welcome everybody to the second episode of Div Zero Unfiltered. So in the last episode of Division Zero Unfiltered, we we talked about our the entire um, data leakage breach with Singtel and us using uh, Acilion's FTA. We talk about the impact and we rate it on our scale of our ultimate disaster scale, uh, how bad the incident is going to be. So today we're back here again with our usual crew, uh, myself, my co-host Fatli, Brandon, um, Pan Yong and uh, Emil. So sadly today, uh, Izzat has something on and he couldn't join us. So we'll just proceed on with the five of us instead. Or maybe next episode, you're going to see Izzat again. Right, so let's jump into the whole thing proper. Now, what we're going to talk about today is slightly a little bit more controversial as compared to um, the last episode. As we were going through the reports, uh, general news report regarding the incident of um, Singtel and Acelion, uh, we realized that actually, you know, the, the one of the key highlight words that keep popping up was uh, the Clock Ransomware Group. So we went to dig a li little bit more about, you know, what exactly went on with Clock Ransomware Group and the data leakage itself. Uh, we found out that you know, actually Klopp was asking for $250,000 worth of Bitcoin from Singtel, you know, prior to releasing this data all over the, the customer data all over the public domain itself. And Singtel obviously did not pay. So today, we're over here on a very controversial topic. And welcome to episode two, to pay or not to pay. So I'll start it off with um, uh, something that's much more easy for you know for us to talk about. Uh, let's start off with uh, Fali first. Uh, so Fali, what's your thoughts on should we pay or should we not to pay? <laughs> well, it's going to be a long one for me, man. So um, I think it depends. Right? Um, there are two things to go through here. And I think uh, when the, uh, I'll talk in the perspective of Sintel, or uh, at least why they decided not to pay. Um, one, I feel they have they have probably done their assessment on the kind of data uh, that they have already sort of exposed, and I think it is possible that the data, although it could be to us, is important because it's personal data, right? Like email, contact numbers, and everything. But if the data itself is not classified under threat for national security, mm -hmm. uh, they may not think that this is really something that, you know, they can take the risk of this being uploaded to the dark web and we don't have to pay for it. Uh, if you look at past cases where um, breaches happen and they have to, they, they were fine. Yep. Uh, if you look at those people whose personal data were affected, they can actually claim and that amount was less than 50 bucks. Right. <laughs> Per, right. per personal data being affected, right? So it's very small. Um, to to uh, uh, if let's say a uh, 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 let's say two hundred fifty people and you and each personal data, uh, you just have to pay like fifty bucks as of you know as what you can get from the company itself. So it took, if if they were to calculate in that manner, right? Okay, fifty bucks, two hundred fifty people, and then if you jumble it up, and the price would have been somewhere that you'd have to pay is this much. They will probably say, you know what, uh, it's more it's more expensive to pay the ransomware because it's cheaper actually to pay back this. So I think they may have some kind of calculation that happen in the background before Sintel decides that you know uh, we are not going to pay for it. Uh, so it depends on the kind of data that is being out there. Um, and I believe they have done the assessment. If there is data that is classified as confidential, as in secret, that could affect or impact the national security or uh, economic security, um, then I think, I think, in my personal opinion, they may consider or they might consider paying the ransomware, depending on the kind of classification that they are exposed. Uh, so, so that's for the Singtel side. Now, should, should I pay or should I not pay if uh, if if I were affected, let's say, right, or generally for a company. So there's two kinds of ransomware. One is a sophisticated one like Clock, for example, right, um, where they will ask things like 250,000, 500,000. There are also uh, there are also cases where they were uh, people were asking for about $25 million because these ransomware operators are smart. They don't just hack as a report, they don't hack in terms of opportunistic hack. They look at the company before they actually hack. And if they are able to penetrate into that company, they will look into your financial 
background. And if you make an estimated amount of certain million or billion dollars a year as your profit, they will actually take a certain amount from that portion. Because, because I remember there was one case where there was a discussion between a, a track actor and, and, and the cyber insurance personnel representing this particular organization, which is a rich company. Uh, the, 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 the guy was asking, could you give us some discount? We want to pay, but we can't afford this. And then the, reg, the ransomware actor kind of say, don't bullshit me. I look at your company financial background. You know, you are worth this much. You get this much profit. I'm sure you can pay, right? So, so they are smart, right? So, so that's one side of the ransomware. Those are sophisticated ones. And then this is something that every company has to decide whether they, have, they want to, to pay or not. Many in the cases that I have been looking at monitoring, I would say a lot of companies actually pay for it. And this is very easy to guess because when, if you actually monitor the dark web or, or, uh, or monitor the ransomware operators that publishes the company names, not the data yet, the, pub, the company's names, um, you can see that some of the company names that was initially there, the data was not there. So that indicates that the company actually paid for it. Right. But if you see the data came, uh, was, uh, uh, like for example, in the case of Singtel, it's there because Singtel eventually didn't pay for it. So, so it's, it's a bit, uh, so it, I think it depends on the company policy. It's very hard to say. I, I, I think reputation plays a big part on this. If they find that this data can affect or impact the client where the client, they, they foresee that the client will not be able, will not kind of like severe the relationship, uh, then I would say they will probably pay for it. If not, I think if the, the, the data classification that is being released is small, don't, don't really have any impact, right? they won't pay for it. Um, so, so that's one for the organized perspective. And then there's another ransomware where it's an everyday kind of use where people, they, you know, via Torven, when you download via Torven, mm -hmm. and that is actually a ransomware instead. And, but these are small amount of money, right? They will ask for $250, $300, $500, not in the thousands, you know, like, like company kind. So, so they are smart. They know their victims. Uh, also, in, the, in this case, should you pay or should you not pay? Now, uh, I think one of the things that I like to bring up in this particular perspective is uh, many of them will actually pay for it because a lot of them, uh, a lot of them have a lot of personal data that they never actually back up. A lot of these end user on their personal system have quite a number of pictures, personal folders, personal pictures and everything, sensitive pictures. Mm -hmm. So they tend to pay for it. Um, if you look at an, an angle of, if you were to retrieve the data from a hard disk crash perspective. Now, you know how much does a hard disk crash, when you, when you crash your hard disk, and you need to retrieve back the data, you go to a company to actually get that, you know how much that costs, it's not cheap, you know. So I, I've been to one, so 500 gigabyte of data roughly costs about $3,500. And I paid for it because it contains wow. a lot of my family features. And because right. of that, I learned my lesson, I have three different hard disks for my backup. <laughs> so you said you have a raid at home. <laughs> it's, yes, it's a painful lesson, but because of that, it, you know, it's, it's, you, learn, you learn a lot from that experience, right? Mm -hmm. um, so if let's say if my system uh, got, got ransomware in this particular case, should I go to a recovery service to, to get my data for 2005 or should I just pay the ransomware operator $250 to get back my data? I would probably pay for it, ransomware data. So, so, you, so there's a kind of situation that you need to assess before you make that decision. All right. So at least that's, that's for my opinion, my perspective, and based on my observation, analysis, and research on these kind of cases. So I think other people may have their own interpretation or, or perspective on this. Actually, yeah. I, I have a, more of a question than, uh, than having an opinion. Uh, so, so if you do the math for, for Singtel, right, there's 139,000 uh, people, right? Yep. yep. Uh, so if, if, uh, if uh, each customer claims 50 bucks, and that, that will be uh, uh, what? Uh, okay, let's do the math, right? Uh, 139,000, 1.2 million into five, five uh, okay, yeah. seven million. I'm sure whatever the number, right? So that's, six and a half million around there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so, so that that would essentially cost more than the uh, 250,000 US, assume US dollars, right? 
uh, sure, uh, sure. uh worth of Bitcoin, right? So that's one angle. I guess I also want Singtel's um uh, uh decision parameters around that. Is, is that them trying also to weigh against uh, the potential penalties from from the regulators? How, how much would the fine be if, uh, if 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 the authorities were to fine Singtel? How much how much would, would that that ballpark uh, amount be? Anybody has a clue or yeah? I, I won't know. Uh, no, I, I won't know how much the the fine is going to be. I think that that's something that a lot of people would be interested to know and to find out soon. Yeah. Um, usually, well, uh, usually for, for, for any fines, I think for this particular case, if personal data is involved, I think, uh, and since they are private organization, PDPC will be the one stepping in. Yeah. Um, so usually in terms of, um, usually in terms of um, the penalty uh, is based on due diligence, right? Whether yeah, organization, yeah. is it appropriate, you know? They did the yeah. best really. I yeah. you know, they have done the best. They have the best governance, the best control. They are, they 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 have all the capabilities that's needed. There's monitoring, there's detections, there's response. They, uh, they they, they did everything right and sway law. Then they cannot hack. Uh, there's a data breach. Then usually, if they've done the best to secure those data, I think then uh the, the fine won't be uh bad. So usually the, the penalty that uh the, the fine is based on um negligence. Right, uh, yeah. So if you know you deliberately knows that you're not, uh, that your system is weak, uh, you 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 um you didn't go and fix it, then then you you get a higher penalty. Yeah, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll know until until we get the until we see, uh, well, um, uh, yeah, until we see what what's the what's the penalty at the end of the day. That's why I think in the last few years there's a lot of PDPC fine. Uh, some people will always say, oh, you know, come on, how how can some of the breach be worth just a few thousand fine. Right. Actually, if you the 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 entire message is they have done the best, or yeah. you know they done enough. Uh, to you know they are not negligence in, in per se lah. Yeah. Right. So I, I guess it's just more of uh what what I guess maybe we're kind of speculated here. Uh, mm-hmm. uh but it's just more of what what goes in behind the mind of uh the decision maker in Singtel when they decided not to pay the fine. Uh, I think we, when we voted last week, so my if I look at it from a from a individual angle, I say uh, uh, they uh, they seem to have taken uh, a decision not based on the best interest of protecting the customer data. That kind of uh, pisses me off, right? I I'm the customer. Unfortunately, uh, I'm not I'm not the uh, not the customer, and therefore not affected. Uh, so so in a sense, say look, two hundred fifty thousand um, dollars, uh, 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 single dollar terms for the K is kind of uh, chicken feet for Singtel to pay, right? Why can't they just pay the money and then uh, secure my data, right? Um, and and it's hundred fifty nine thousand people data. It's kind of kind of simple math to say, yeah, hundred fifty thousand two dollars per <laughs> two dollars <laughs> two US dollars per customer. That's kind of cheap, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm sure this kind of uh, if I do a simple economics, right? This this is decision. I I kind of struggle to say why did they make the decision to go ahead and then uh, pay the ransom and then sort of move on and uh, keep the customer happy. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's just interesting actually. Plan you brought yeah. this up. Um, <laughs> I I was uh I, I, one one thing that really caught me was when you say that why can't they pay the ransom and secure the data? Yeah. Actually, the thing is, are we still talking about security? <laughs> uh, yeah, we are not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, I, yeah. I, I, that, that's a good point because like, you know last week we talked about um mm. how how bad it is, and I actually said that well I don't think it's that bad, mm. but if it's me. I think it's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> Putting yeah. the human yeah. personal perspective is like, oh come on, you know, you should have done everything that you have, you you as in your arsenal and able uh, and capability to have prevented this for yeah. myself to be uh to, to to suffer any consequences. I think that yeah. that's the that's the gist uh of I think from from a victim point of view in terms of like you know why why should I have, have suffered the consequences? Yeah. Um, and and just now when you did the maths um. It's in terms of like if one person you're you're paying fifty. Uh, I'm not too sure about it, actually in Singapore, but uh, in US, if such a thing happen, usually the, the 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 investment or the 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 compensation that uh organization have to give uh to to any uh data breach or personal data leak, I think per person they could spend a few hundred dollars in terms of even like credit monitoring and, and things like that. So fifty is actually very low. So. Uh, I think compared to a quick match earlier, I think it would have been double, triple, uh, or even quadruple of that that that, that quick calculation earlier. 
I think um Panyu also mentioned this thing about economy, the the I the economy thinking of it. And, and I think it really the whole saga of this is is beyond security and anymore. Yeah. I think it's it's I, I see from an angle of game theory, like uh, whether you should pay or, or, or not. Uh I think a lot of people that comes to their first um in, in the first thing that probably comes to their mind is nah, you know, when it comes to the reservoir, we should not pay. Right. Uh I think that 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 principle drills uh down to um this this uh this very concept about uh um whether you should pay kidnappers or whether yeah. you should pay Terrorists, uh, yeah. Terrorists, right? Um, as if we should not entertain, if it's kidnappers, we should not entertain, you know, things like that. I think Singtel maybe have took that that principle, that moral high ground principle that no, you know, we do not negotiate with um the bad guys, right? Yep. So um I, I think I think this entire conversation goes trans transcend beyond just uh security. It's all about this decision making. But at the end of the day, uh how are people uh, you know, uh, juggling with this, uh, I, I think, and, and I, I think before, before, uh, when we were looking through all this article and we were floating around, I think a couple of us we were saying that it is interesting because in the past when you talk about cybersecurity, it's always been like, all right, you know, there is some, there's some bad guys out there to get you, right? But now, when the ransomware, you know, the ransom folks come come about, they're knocking on the door. It's yeah. no longer that invisible. Yeah. They actually have a freaking business model as yeah, as funny yeah, yeah. mentioned. Earlier, <laughs> yes, that yes. They are yeah. actually going around going companies, yeah. and you know there's always this thought that you know if you pay them once, you have to pay them the second time or third time. Right. But if they are actually an enterprise, mm. they might want to earn your trust and say if you pay me once, you might not have to pay me the second time, because yeah. if they do that for one organization, they will know the second the next organization that that, that did this to, uh, will definitely not want to pay them anymore. Right, yeah. so it's mm-hmm. just gonna see it's a so lot of things that are gonna play maybe out. Maybe some honor to uh to keep the business going up, right? Yeah, yeah. I think it's, yeah. it's some. There's uh, I think it's, it's, our security space is really yeah. evolving in such a space, uh, in such a way, uh, that that this criminal they also have to think about how trustworthy I am. Yeah. Uh, so when, <laughs> um, when I go about and ask for ransom, uh, there's a higher chance uh, of people paying me, and how do I go about doing so? Yeah, we, we, need a, we need a website for a reputation index for uh, for the <laughs> different uh, groups of uh, yeah. <laughs> groups. So but actually, I do an interesting question. So, so I go back to Andy's question about um, uh, the, the typical ransom, right? Or kidnapping, right? Uh, that being the case, I think I don't have the statistics in front of me, but um, I, I kind of have the impression that in many cases, uh, the, the, uh, the, the whole uh, 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 the, the victim wasn't released, right? So um, uh, even when the ransom is being paid, right? I'm sure anybody have the stats of what, what, what are we looking at, right? Just in terms of uh, the online ransomware market, so to speak, right? But what are we looking at? Are we looking at uh, 80% owner, right? Uh, 20% take the money and run? What, what kind, what, what's, the, what's the statistics of that? Yeah, anybody, anybody know? Partly or... I think it's a little bit more sophisticated than, than <laughs> just the debt, uh, from, yeah. from my point of view. I feel like because... Yeah. Uh, in the end, when the real life kidnapping happens, right? Yeah. At least you can call the cops, yeah. right? But in mm. on, on the ransomware um, yeah. sense, there's no cops. So who are the cops? You can't call yeah. any cops. You know, you don't yeah. even know who's these people. Yeah. I don't even know who. Where are they storing? It's like you know, like at least if I were to let's say, uh, I'm just saying, uh, Payong, please don't, please don't kill me. But if I yeah. say I were to kidnap your kid, yeah. uh, I were to hide him in like my place, I will obviously drop you a note and I will say, hey, you're not gonna bring this amount yeah. of money at this particular yeah. location. You're gonna meet me and pass me the money. Then I'll yeah. release your kid. That kind of thing. Yeah. You know, yeah. but you know that I'm in, in the country. Yeah, you know I mean, I, yeah. I gotta be yeah, yeah. somewhere yeah. here. But for ransomware, there's no pinpoint. You don't even know where these guys are at. Yeah. Because yeah. it's such a huge I think this 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 brings us to the fundamental issue with uh the virtual world or with mm. information itself, like uh on with on the internet itself. So we can never really pinpoint like, where exact which location are you at. It requires mm-hmm. such a long time, such a long investigation for us to even find out slowly like oh where the attackers are coming from, who who are the attackers, who are the actors behind it, as opposed yeah. to you know just hopping in like on a normal kidnapper itself. Can I say something? Sorry. Sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so excited when you said that. <laughs> uh, actually, this this is very interesting. This, this, oh, the, I love this conversation today. Um, <laughs> interesting because oh, um. Say you say you kidnap Pancho's kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. The thing about most kid, okay, I, I don't know. I'm not I'm not an expert kidnapper, neither am I police. Uh, yeah. But 
So, Marie, if you kidnap my, my kid, uh, please make sure. Uh, so I don't assign a daughter and help, help her pass a PSLE. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the next, uh, just make sure uh, I'll, I'll, I'll pay you a monthly subscription. Yeah. I think three million not enough, sure, yeah. yeah. Sure PSLE, yeah. yeah. Uh, the interesting thing about kidnappers is if someone actually kidna- kidnap a kid and call you, give you a, a, a you know distorted voice. And, but the thing is, most of the time you'll be like, who the hell is this person? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You actually have, you you might not, you, your, your information about them is actually quite low in terms of what's their MO, what's their behavior. But in cybersecurity, at least, although, you know, just now we talk about attribution in terms of like where are they, right? But yep. that's, that's physical attribution. However, I think, I mean, by cybersecurity practice for the last few years, at least we know, we start to actually build our data, data banks about behavior about certain groups. Mm. So we know what they can do, what they will do. In, yeah. in some way, you kind of have a bit of predictability. Yeah. Although uh, they can say that they are from um, yeah. that group, you can't be 100% sure, but yep. still... Interestingly, it's like, although it might sound, it is invisible, uh, this invisible bad actor, uh, you know, being is invisible might, might sound scary, but actually in, in security, when, you know, as more and more people are being victimized, you can kind of slowly know what, you know, what will they do? What, what are some of the techniques, you know, their TTPs uh, essentially, uh, what is their thinking process? And that, that could, you know, even help you in terms of decision making uh, that you might not actually have the luxury of say yeah. uh, <laughs> 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 yeah. yes, yes I mean of course I mean because number one is because kidnapping never became an enterprise and I wish we would never become an enterprise <laughs> so, so go back to the enterprise the question just more of uh, I guess if we selfishly pay and get rid of problem get data back and move on right but I guess from a as from a, a professional perspective are we therefore encouraging uh, such behavior and therefore you know, uh, compounding uh, the broader, I mean, essentially we are creating, a, helping to create an economy, right? Like by paying up mm-hmm. uh, that's, that's, that's a, uh, I think that's a flip side of pay, right? Uh, if we selfishly do that and then uh, uh, maybe, yeah, in a way, come to way, we should give Singta some kudos, right? For, <laughs> You're having for a saying, more yeah, I'm not going to pay, we have more yeah. high ground and, and stuff. And maybe it doesn't have to promote the, the industry. I'm sure. What's 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 the what does you guys think? Yeah. Yeah, I'm just gonna quote some uh, statistics yeah. here yeah. regarding just pure capitalism. Yeah. I would say yeah. so. The, the two cities I'm quoting is uh, both yeah. based in US. Uh, I mean, uh, first of all, it's Atlanta. Yeah. Uh, it was they were hit in uh, with Sam Sam. Yeah. So in the March of 2018, they refused to pay the 51,000 US dollars yeah. uh, ransomware, and you know in the end they had to. The end result was for them to rebuild their network, right? It took them 17 million US dollars. I mean, for sure, definitely, this is like, as, as what Pai Yong said, I just, you know, they had a moral high ground. They said, no, we don't deal with terrorists. Yeah. You know, we don't pay that 51,000. But in the end, they had to spend 17 million. So, yeah. on, on, I mean, if we don't take in, how do I say, um, morality, we're just talking pure capitalism, money, profit driven, right? This, this is like a really bad decision making point. Correct. So the yeah. second city that I'm going to talk about also is a similar situation, which is uh, Baltimore. In May 2019, they refused to pay the attacker $76,000. And then they had to spend an estimated $18 million to rebuild their networks as well. Right. So just from pure capitalism point of view, these are really bad decision points. Mm-hmm. But of course, if if this like, you know, like if you were to keep, as what Pai would say, if you keep paying them, right, then obviously, you know, they, they have, they'll become stronger, they'll become better, they're able to hire more people, yeah. really grow their corporations. Yeah, skill, skill the business. Yeah. Yes, yes, they'll yeah, be able yeah. to skill their business. Yeah, go, uh, no, least uh, have an IPO. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right? Somewhere <laughs> as a service. <laughs> so, when yeah, service is thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, based on my research, right? Yeah. So most of these government, like city, city, uh, local governments, uh, they would usually not pay for the ransomware. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But for corporates, right, like enterprise, uh, in, uh, corporations, they mostly, uh, would would pay the ransomware. And I I've read an article in Bloomberg, uh, regarding this, like to pay or not to pay the ransomware. Uh, there is a there is a policy that uh, that the Treasury Department, uh, the Treasury Department's Office of Foreign Asset Control, actually wanted these corporations to actually do a prepayment due diligence, because right. uh, they might be paying to a sanctioned nation, and 
then the company, though they they were able to uh, in, a, in a capitalistic uh, mindset, right? They were able to continue their operation without any uh, or with minimal loss, but the government might uh, charge them with criminal uh, uh, lawsuits uh, because of this. Uh, uh, that, that because the the actors might be residing in nations that are sanctioned by the U.S. law, so it's quite critical for 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 corporations to pay or not to pay. But for yeah. government, I think uh, I think the 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 ideology is to really not to uh, pay uh, anything uh, to the criminals. Yeah, that's interesting. That you know, city actually see it from a point of view of uh, or from the for the eye of the law, as uh, Randon you mentioned that yeah. they actually see that if if you pay, you actually do you you know it's a business transaction. Yeah. But potentially, yeah. if it's a sanctioned uh, sanctioned country, then they're yeah. doing business. Yeah. <laughs> or pay tax. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to deal with. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Right. So, so, so I, I guess just uh, just pop, pop in a, a question. I think well, maybe uh, 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 for people tuning in, uh, that we small businesses and I, I, I went I did um, encounter quite a few uh, situation where there are small businesses who typically doesn't protect their asset quite uh, well or not at all, uh, and um, and they tend to hit by uh, and it, it's quite common they are hit by ransomware. I guess I guess the hard question for many of them is really uh, uh, they don't have skill set. Um, uh, uh, and and the, to pay or not to pay is quite a big question for for this group of people when they're ever hit, right? Uh, first, they're not they don't understand the whole landscape, like you know uh, we talk about today. Uh, their their concern will be you know if you may pay, uh, is that really uh, somebody at the end of line uh, that will honor that kind of transaction? Um, I, I don't really have a have an opinion about this. I just just thinking out loud is uh, for a lot of uh, small businesses actually it's, it's quite on the top of mind. What do they do when something like that happens to them? Yeah. Actually, I think we've, we've drifted yeah. a bit yeah. really yeah. much into, you know, paying because it yeah. provides such um, financial yeah. soundness, yeah. you know, yeah. like we don't have to spend yeah. so much money. But now, because the thing that you just quoted us just now, I actually managed to find some statistics for it. Yeah. Yeah. So according to one of the Sentinel-1 research, right, it shows that 45% of the US companies were hit with ransomware attack and they yeah. paid at least yeah. one ransom. Right. But only 26% of these companies had their files unlocked. Yeah, right. yeah, so mm. then f- further on, there's even more interesting statistics that's coming up. So let's say, for yeah. example, the companies that actually paid the ransom, right, and they were attacked again, right? Mm. <laughs> attacked again 73% of the time. Yeah. yeah. So that means actually you showing that you're willing to pay actually makes you more susceptible. That's what people like, the word spread. Like yeah. uh, ransomware group A going to say, hey, you know what? We just hit uh, company X today and you know they paid. Yeah. And ransomware group B will be like, oh, you know what? Let's, let's do it again. I think they're going to pay for us as well. So you make yourself actually become an even bigger target if you were to pay for it. Yeah, according to these yeah. statistics uh, from the United States, uh, uh, from the Sentinel-1 at least. Yeah. Okay. No, that's very interesting. Yeah. Yeah, so... Definitely it runs the risk. Let's say for example, right now we are saying like, uh, you know, um, Atlanta or Baltimore could have paid that small little amount of money as opposed to spending 17 million and 18 million in cleaning their networks. But what if they paid the money and, you know, they never actually unlock their files? Mm. Yeah. So even if like we're saying that they're building up this kind of trust and all that kind of stuff, but it's really easy to impersonate as a particular ransomware group. Yeah. 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 So even like say for example, like say a uh, club, <laughs> maybe have a huge rap in a business, but <laughs> actually it is not real club. This is like yeah. Asia club. You know, club yeah. just being, <laughs> just being 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 you know, scratched yeah, so, around with. Yeah. yeah. Like if Peng Fei actually kidnap someone's uh kidnap Peng Yong Kit and uh yeah. release in uh, on payment, yeah. uh I yeah. might. In my kidnaps a fat least kid and say, hey, this is pun- this is pun- <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I think it's very different to uh I, I remember I attended a seminar where mm. they equate ransomware as a kidnap of data. But if you think about it, it's not really a kidnap of data, right? It's just, you know, if you kidnap a person, the person is not within your possession. But the data itself is within your possession, it's just it's being encry- encrypted. So could be a little bit of technical uh, differences when you, you when we align it to or, or, or put it in the same angle as uh, the kidnapping of a person, the, the kidnap of data. So yeah, that can be, can be a little bit technical, technically challenged as well, if you want to put it that way. Uh, but, but yeah, the Sentinel-1 report is quite interesting, um, but I don't think they actually... Rem- mention in terms of who are the ransomware operators, which is, I, 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 to a certain extent, is true. 
where some of the files uh, were not were not decrypted, but majority of the times the reason why they were not un were not decrypted because there was not a failure of the giving of the decryption key, but it was a failure of the ransomware itself in terms of when they create the ransomware binary, it wasn't properly developed. So, so you paid, they give you the, the decryption key, but because the ransomware had some issues, they, weren't, they, weren't, they were not able to be decrypted, right? So most of the cyber criminal enterprise, especially ransomware, they try to be in a way uh, legit where they try to give the decryption key because if they don't, uh, a lot of people will say, oh, since, you, since other people are affected and you give them decryption key, they paid for it and they are not being encrypted, why should I pay you, right? So there must be some kind of credibility involved for this ransomware operator itself. Right. Uh, so, but most of the time, uh, the main ones, the main ones, especially those that are involved in uh, big game hunting or you know BGH, uh, those are the ransomware sophisticated, sophisticated ones like Clop, like Samsam, like Sodino KB. Uh, those kind of uh, operators behind them, they are, they are true to their, to their word. So if if you pay, I'll give you the decryption sheet decryption key if the decryption key doesn't work they will make sure that it works all right oh, uh, customer support <laughs> yeah yeah they do, they, they, they do have customer Whoa. support right they Whoa, do have wow. customer support so so for example in a ransom note for example you can see that uh in the past what they do is you have pay a this channel. much yeah yeah like pay this yeah. much to this bitcoin address then we'll yeah. give you decryption sheet decryption decryption key but those are very that was that. That's more like that's not untargeted. That's more like you no. Know, I send you a mail spam of of by uh, of malicious attachment that will install in somewhere, right? It's by opportunity, but those sophisticated one like Clock, for example, right? Uh, they will give you a ransom note. Then they will also not just give you the money, but they also give you a point of contact for you to talk to. Uh, there are there are times where uh, a, a a company can. Can uh, want to negotiate, right? That's why it is. And funny, funny thing is, there was a case where I think there was a case where this particular person who was based in Syria was affected by this ransomware, and he actually complained to the actor saying that I'm based in Syria, I'm poor, I don't have money. Why are you doing this to me? So what happened was, I I think. I can't remember the country. I think it's Syria or something uh, or somewhere in Middle East. Uh, so the criminal eventually gave the decryption key for free. Wow. And what happens next, based out of confession, uh, the, the geography location, whenever this installed for this particular tractor, for this, uh, this, those that install this transfer, they will check whether your IP is based on this country. If it's based on this country, they will not install the ransomware. Uh, so, oh. so that's, yeah, so there's a certain kind of compare. So that's all VPN to Syria. Yeah, that's VPN. Yeah. <laughs> no, let's, let's buy IPs from this yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I'm so you know my why. server in Syria yeah. now. <laughs> so, yeah. so, you know, you know the TTP. So, one of the TTPs in terms of the yeah. malware, the ransomware itself, yeah. when they, before they first install it, they will look in. They will send your IP address, your public IP, yeah. to their servers mm -hmm. and see whether these IPs are within the CIS countries, which is the Eastern Europe and Russian yeah. part. If they are, they will not install. Right? Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's how it works. Right? <laughs> so that's why you rarely see countries within the Eastern European side of Russia being uh, complaining or affected by ransomware because they have a law. In, in, in Russia, they have this kind of like, for, I think, like a known law where, or a hidden law where you want to do all this. As long as you don't do it against your own people or within this CIS, it's fine. Yeah. Uh, if you do it in the US, then you know, if you do it against us, then you piss the music. If you if you want to stay in the US or any other countries, that's up to you. So pretty much Russian cyber criminals room free. And if you, the reason why they are being caught is because they are smart or I would say dumb enough to actually go to the US yeah. to, uh, to go to some conference or party and eventually they got caught. That's the reason why they got caught. If they stick 
themselves to the US, they will be there forever. No one, they are not going to get caught, you know. So, so yeah, it's, it's a pretty interesting business uh, for these ransomware operators. This reminds me of a lot of the old colonial age, you know, the privateers. Yeah. yeah, you know, like they were, they were hired by, I mean, obviously, we can't, we can't say like these uh, ransomware groups are being hired by CIS, you know, to, to do damage. Pri- privateers are non-nation uh, state actors, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But without, no, I'm just saying like, the, the actions are similar. I'm not saying that CIS is sponsoring these guys to come out and wake people. It's yeah. too huge. I don't want to, you know, um, someone from Russia showing up my door oh. tomorrow. <laughs> no, it's be friendly. Hi, I'm your friendly yeah. cop uh, sales assistant. <laughs> but then we have 3T sales. Yeah. yeah. So I think... yeah. <laughs> here's here's a discount code. Quote yeah, Unfei yeah. one hundred yeah. to get fifteen oh, percent yeah. discount. Yeah. This is, Maybe we should, we should this is time up, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, we have a promotion. Promotion. Yeah. Yeah. Crop dot com slash zero. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So actually, it reminds me of the action from from that side. Is that they generally they are doing the same thing. They are identifying which country it is exactly from. And then from there, they are deciding whether or not, you know, I want to whack this country. So it's the same as last time privateers. But I mean, of course, last time they had the, you know, the countries backing them, like uh, between the UK and the Spanish empire themselves, you know, they were having all these fights. Uh, they're targeting particular trade routes, they're targeting particular ships. So for them on this, this and it seems to be fully profit driven. So whoever is able to pay the most amount of money, uh, whichever target is you know, like the biggest whale, as what Fali said, uh, big game hunting, whichever is the biggest game, I'm, I'm going after it. And then from there, we get the most amount of stuff from it, right? But is, is there no way you know, like to, to say that it's unpreventable? Let's say we, we are unable to prevent the rise of such a, yeah, such a, such a scenario. Or such an enterprise, you know, we don't. Of course, we definitely don't want to f- keep facing this kind of thing. It's slowly as we're giving into this kind of thing, uh, then when the enterprise becomes so large, right, everybody is going to be slowly affected. So or later, one, every single one of us is going to be faced with like, uh, maybe like a sub division under Klopp, like you know, how uh, end user, end user targeted <laughs> ransomware, that kind of thing. So, how how do you advise maybe like con- like? Definitely, our viewers or our listeners from this particular podcast or talk show itself, um, what can they do, you know, to to actually alleviate this particular problem? Um, uh, I think so. There is one thing. If you look at uh cases where repeated cases of ransomware, right? Like for example, you mentioned a, a report from Sentinel, uh, one Sentinel where a company that is paid, then they cannot attack again, right? Mm. Either the same uh criminal group or another criminal group. For example, Toll, Toll uh, the Australian company, uh, they got hit twice by different ransomware operators. Mm-hmm. Now, if you look, uh, this, this is one of the reasons why I think threat intel is quite important in, in the sense that threat intelligence try to learn the TTPs of threat actors, right? Uh, for, for, for ransomware, how they, how they deliver, how they attack, how, how they weaponize certain things. Uh, do they do it by phishing? Do they find a zero day vulnerability? Do they hack your network, like, you know, public facing sites where they go in, into before they actually uh, do that? So cases like, uh, uh, CETA is a different case, right? Um, but cases like, uh, if I'm not mistaken, try, can, let me try to remember for a specific company that I can have in mind. Anyway, uh, okay. Let, let's not put the name. Let's not mention the name of the company. <laughs> uh, so, so how most of these big game hunters, how they do it, right, is usually they do like a red team style. They look for the vulnerabilities. They exploit that vulnerabilities. You know, uh, then they go in and then they search for the AD and then they look for a weak system. They try to do later movement and then when they hit those system that pushes down things like AD push it down the good policy uh, stuff, that's why they hit the most. 707,000 system all can at once. So mm-hmm. they didn't, so they know Kibi was, it's a good example of that kind of uh, techniques that they adopted. So, so, so the kind of advice I can, they should actually take is, you know, there's a thing called weight teaming, not just doing pen testing, but you should incorporate or have this weight teaming stuff incorporated in your environment. You know, do, learn from you know from what the threat actors are that's where the mitre attack framework comes in you can actually learn how these threat actors utilize you know the, the attack mm-hmm. put it in that framework 
be utilize that framework and start thinking like an actor and start attacking like the actor that utilizes this framework. Right? Then you can see for sure that is protected. I, I'm pretty sure things like cases like the Australian company that I mentioned just now, uh, the reason why they got hacked the second time was likely probably they just patch what they think is wrong, uh, but they forget to check whether there are other loopholes in that environment that can be exploited. And because right. of that, because because I'm sure that established, well, credible big companies, usually when they get hit, they try not to get hit a second time. But if they get hit a second time, then something is not right with their own patching process or security process mm -hmm. that happen after that. So yeah, uh, incorporate a proper patch management policies at the same time incorporate uh, rate teaming exercises. You know, um, so that that I think would definitely help a lot at least to, 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 to cover or to protect from the first layer of, of attack. That's, that's what I think that, that, that can help. Yeah. Companies. So, yeah. So guys, you know, definitely please don't just take uh you know like the easy way out and just hey you know what I got hit by a ransomware and I just pay lah. No, <laughs> please, please, please try to <laughs> ensure that your policy and your and your and your security infrastructure everything is in place. You know, according to what everybody is gonna give you a little bit of advice here and about. To, you don't want to pay. You don't want to help grow <laughs> this particular industry. So yeah. you think about the paying structure, right? So if you think about it, right, if you pay let's say you pay you, you better learn your lesson and start protecting because mm -hmm. if you don't if you let's say if you so like the baltimore case or atlantic city right um if they had paid the fifty two thousand dollars and spent that millions in protecting the security you know mm -hmm. uh, then that would help a lot but uh, rather than you don't pay and then you wait you spend much more than that so so for example in uh, in the case of the australian company if they had actually, if they have paid, but they spend more to 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 secure their environment, learning from their mistakes, mm -hmm. I don't think that a second time would happen. Actually, to right. be honest, um, I just had a crazy idea. Can you imagine if Atlanta City actually went went out right and told the group, "Hey guys, we know we pay you a uh, two million dollars. <laughs> Come <laughs> in and help us fix our system <laughs> instead of taking just the fifty one thousand dollars itself." Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but that's, that's just a crazy idea. I mean, that's just... That, <laughs> right. there is, uh, some backdoors. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, no, well, so, that, yeah. so believe it or not, there are yeah. some uh, cyber criminal groups. We call it cyber criminals based on our perspective, yeah. right? But mm -hmm. to them, uh, it's a service. Uh, and some of the websites that I've seen, uh, for example, there's this famous hacking group called Kevin Security. Kevin Security. I think they are Eastern European companies. Uh, hacking groups mm -hmm. they actually offer red teaming services consulting services right and by the same time they also steal data and sell off this data to interested users and buyers even from both right. sides yeah. yeah so so yeah. they are both they, they are both black hats and white hats in a way right uh, so they have these services but at the same time they also you know do but I think it's very um, it's very challenging to say whether to know whether they are doing what they are doing is right or wrong. I'll give you an example. Like if you look at the scam cases in India, it's very high. Uh, they have like scam calls or these like breaking mm -hmm. Windows customer support. Mm -hmm. I remember going to Dubai. Uh, I think that was in 2014 or 2013. I was presenting in Dubai. Um, I came across a company that was eventually that was reported in the news previously where this company was actually was actually a, a scam call center and they profited so much within that year the whole building was just scam call uh, scam call uh, uh, callers the whole bloody building you know <laughs> wow. yeah so so the funny part when when he passed by my booth at the time uh, i asked him what did you guys do? So it was like, oh, I'm a Windows customer support and everything. Went to the conference, paid for the conference and everything, you know. But this company is well known. But it wasn't reported in India that it was a scam company. It was reported from the US media that this was a scam company. But when I spoke to him about this kind of thing, I didn't mention, I didn't mention the part that, you know, he, he's doing something illegal and stuff. Because from, illegal is from our perspective, based on our laws. But to them, it's not. I think like they don't even know what they are doing is illegal yeah. probably because of their current laws you know uh, they are not strict that is open 
you know, uh, and and because of that, the complacency of of not having such laws turn them into thinking that what they are doing is not wrong. That I think so. That, that's why I feel it's happening, because the, when when I saw him walk past by, I saw the company there, he, and he was with a bunch of groups with the same company. I was like, what? This is interesting, man. I read this guy, this company is like two months ago was part of the big scam call. So when I asked him that he was doing a Windows customer support, I know for sure that this is the <laughs> a scam, a scam guy. Right? That's their TTPs. So yeah, so probably from the Russian side of things, I think probably the same thinking. Maybe because of their uh, economic situation. Mm. Uh, that that they couldn't find jobs, you know, because of their weather, but probably because <laughs> of their current economy, um, yes, they yes. have they <laughs> have to, uh, they have to utilize certain certain ways of earning money for their daily, you know, daily lives, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's a very interesting perspective. I I must say yes. So I think um we have. More or less, really discuss. I mean, it's a very interesting thing. We cannot really come up with an absolute yes or no kind of answer to whether or not you should pay or should not pay for you know a ransomware itself. It definitely depends on your company's uh, uh, stance towards it, and f- even within the members ourselves, you can you can clearly tell like on our uh, discussion today, uh, we have different opinions. People say that like, you should pay, and then you learn from it. People say you should not pay. You should have a moral high ground to to fight against it. To to not you know create this kind of uh, need for this kind of industry to grow mm-hmm. yeah so it really is um from just to sum it up really is just to according to your own uh from your own point of view be, be it that you're a practitioner or be it that you're a company who's out there whether or not your stance on paying for ransomware we, we are here to state that you know ransomware is here to stay it's always going to be there and whether or not you're going to be hit by it is a uh, it's a totally different answer you know, thing. So you must always be prepared. You must always upgrade your security uh, infrastructure, security policies. Your your having all these red team exercises and all that. Yeah, I think we can edit at that at that point. I don't think we should you know drag these uh, any longer. We can always definitely come back to ransomware as a separate topic by itself. But I think for today to 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 pay or not to pay episode, I think we can edit on this note. But it. yeah, what do you guys think? Good. Yeah, good. Yeah, great. Okay, yeah. okay. Let's just make it a little bit more, a little bit more spicy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> For the Singtel's incident, in your own words, you can only pick to pay or not to pay. Okay, so for the Singtel incident, if you were Singtel in this particular sense, would you have paid for the ransomware? Let's start off with. Uh, let's go one round. I'll just arrow anybody. Let's go with random first. <laughs> well, this is tough, man. <laughs> yeah, this is tough, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, uh, so it depends on on Singapore's policy, right? So, no, no, you, you, it depends on you now. Yeah, it depends on me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just so it depends on me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I, I would have paid for the ransomware. Okay, we now have one vote for pay. All right, let's move on. Uh, Pan Yong. Definitely pay uh, two dollars per customer. I'll I'll pay. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure, and they come and now I heard they come with very good customer service. Uh, maybe I'll negotiate for uh, uh no 20% discount. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. Maybe sing sing dollars instead of US dollars. Yeah. Right. Definitely okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh Fali. Yeah. Oh, this is this is very challenging. Um, <clears throat> um because right now we do not exactly know what kind of data, right? Uh, but I think if so, so my answer, there will be two answers. One, if the data involve, uh, revolves around or affect or impact, uh, a possible potentially impact the national security of the, of the country, uh, then I think Singtel should pay. But if it's PII, uh, of course, they are going to lose a couple of customers, but you know Singtel is a huge company and there's not much competition around. People will still subscribe to that. <laughs> so, so, you know, um, they don't. They can choose not to pay because of that as well, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, the strong control of of the uh, the players here. So yeah. Uh, so my answer is, it impacts national security. It should have paid. If it doesn't, then would I have. Paid. So in this, in, this sense, in this sense, I mean, with all the information we have right now, it's just uh, for the Singtel breach is mainly uh, customer data, correct? Personal data, customer personal data, in, including NRIC. So in this sense, would you have paid? Um. If if I were the CEO of Singtel, I assessing the data, right? Um, I wouldn't have. Paid. Okay, great. Now we have two one. Come on, come, on, Emil. 
I think. Well, I don't know whether you're gonna answer this question, but it's gonna be tough on you because I will say no. If if I'm Singtel, if I'm Singtel, like you know, knowing the the stature of the company, the reputation of the company, and what it stands for in terms from a national point of view, I'll say no. I won't pay for it. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So. Nice, nice. Tossing the ball back to me. I had to do the hard <laughs> decision. <laughs> so the deal breaker of the day, from my personal opinion, I would have. Yo, not, bro. What did you say? I would have not paid for it. Right. <laughs> yeah. So yes. Uh, in my point of view, I feel like even though you know there's so much um financial gains that could potentially happen, like and reputation protection or all that stuff, but I feel like we should not support a growth of such a nefarious industry, lah. It's not. It's not cool, uh, You know, to have to let them taste it, taste the sweetness of you know running ransomware, and then after that making it into such a huge enterprise by itself. Yeah, and with that, I think we thank all the viewers and the listeners you know, for joining us on episode two, and this basically wraps up our um, Singtel. I mean, I sell you on Singtel saga itself. Pretty much, we have covered everything that you know that's available right now with all the information. Maybe when you know there's a more concrete report regarding the entire situation will most probably come back and revisit the topic but for now that's a that's all on on this particular topic we'll move on to our next episode and we'll okay i'm not going to announce the nature of it now we'll just leave you hanging so that you know you feel excited <laughs> and want to come back and listen to us for the third time yeah so thanks a lot everybody for joining us today and uh Thanks to everyone, you know, uh, of my team over here for coming down today on a really almost twelve o'clock <laughs> recording <Okay>. this, <laughs> recording this particular episode with me. All right, thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you. See you.